Hi guys, this is Fred and David from WP Shout. And today we're gonna to talk about uh, where to put your WordPress hooks uh, in object-oriented code. And David's kind of gonna be giving answers. I'll be asking questions. So David, do you wanna kind of give an overview of, of how to think about this? Um, there's only run one right way to do it. <laughs> um, no, there are generally three ways you can deal with WordPress hooks. You can put them in your constructor. You can put them in it a separate method of the object itself that you call externally when you new up the object, or you can uh, basically new up the object and then hook on once you've instantiated the object. Um, okay, and which one's the right one? Static methods, which are the right way uh, to do it um, because they're kind of a subset of it. Like a, a static method is a method of your object. So, so number two was the right way to do it or number three? Uh, third, Fred. That's a secret. Uh, OK. Fair enough. All right, so I, I have some code that I was working on for a client um, the other week. Are you able to see this? I know it's we're starting zoomed out, so don't be worried if it's small. Yeah. OK, you can see this? Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, this is something a previous developer wrote um, for, for a client of mine. And I, I was going in and kind of checking it out. Um, it's a class. So the whole PHP side of the plugin is just one single class. And then it news up the class on the on the very last line. The class has like six methods in it, which you can see anytime this this function tag shows up. And 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 it's attached to WooCommerce products, like something or other. Something like that. Yeah. It it it's a way of it's a visual way of listing WooCommerce products. Exactly right. Yeah. So I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see. And yeah, this is kind of where I got where I originally asked David what he thought and where I asked him for help. Basically, this is the constructor method on line eleven, lines eleven to eighteen. And there's a lot of hooks kind of being called in in this method. And I basically was curious whether, you know, whether David thought that was good or bad. So David, what do you think about, about this as a way of, of using hooks in, in, a, in a class? Yeah, I mean, so I jokingly said there was one right way. I do think there might be one wrong way, and it's this. <laughs> okay. The reason I think that is because the underscore, double underscore construct magic method is in WordPress and in PHP in general, a thing that every object has to uh, run before it can exist for the PHP runtime. Mm. As such, if you create this object and it requires that WordPress is running because you're using add action and add filter, um, you can only ever instantiate this object in WordPress. And uh, somewhat worse, depending on what you do in your constructor, I'm not actually certain if add filter and add action break it. I should put that in the text below. Um, mm. But you can potentially have WordPress or PHP just like yell at you because you're probably registering the same function oh. if you uh, if you knew it up. In this case, I think you might be OK because WordPress is just like, I have two random things hooking onto the same object. So you're, you'd have this downside of if you knew up this object, you'd get the same action happening twice. You're saying if you knew it up twice. So if, if I did something if like. If someone wants to extend something that your plugin does. Sure, or even if I did something like something this for no done. reason. Yeah, I mean, you might, one might want to conceivably extend a plugin by newing up one of its objects, changing something about its a setting of that object, and then right. hooking it in in the same place. Yeah, and, and what you're <laughs> saying is, Putting You're your not sure if it would error or not, but at the very least, it would be calling all of these ad actions twice. Right. And I'm not sure if not like good. you have a fatal error, but you definitely have, have a problem. A great situation where yeah. you have to manually unhook um, because right. you just needed to new up. Right. So you're saying, like, if, if I put um, hooked methods in the constructor, then what happens is I lose control of what happens every time I instantiate an object of that class. Yeah, and you can't just like use it as a little object to check something or anything. And, and you said, okay, what if I want to like instantiate this class outside of WordPress? Um, I'm having trouble actually wrapping my head around that. Why would I? Why would I want to do that for this or in general? Like, if the if you have a generic like this thing is good at converting Markdown into HTML, and I want to do that, uh -huh. um, obviously, like. And then it hooks into the content in the constructor. And I right. wanted to use it for another project, something right. like that. Got it. That, okay. That's the downside. And the other, um, um, <clears throat> sorry, I forgot no what to say. Oh, OK, no worries. So you think don't put methods in the constructor? 
don't put don't hook into WordPress's hook system. In general, I don't want any like entangling behavior in a constructor is what I would say. What should a constructor have in it? Um, it should do things like set internal variables that need to be set for the object to function in an expected way. Gotcha. Like if you have a default, if you you know have have to pass in a dependency, a constructor should wrangle those. Mm -hmm. It should wrangle its own dependencies so that the object is ready to function in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't be entangling itself with other objects. Just a, like as a general design principle, a constructor shouldn't be entangling itself with other objects. You can have methods that you can call for that entanglement, which is what add action and add filter basically do. Gotcha. So I don't that? ever want a constructor to like, you know, to have an add action add goal in it. Like any of those things. That any of this add, stuff. Yeah. Like doing more than the life cycle of my object. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so the other two options you mentioned are a function that that um, basically um, a, method. a method. Right. Sorry. Thank you. Um, that that um, calls into WordPress's hook system, or just to do it kind of outside of the, the, the class definition itself. Do you, do you want to kind of say more about those those options? Right. I mean, I think uh, either you wrote that or someone else had written it. Um, the, the, the advantage of putting the methods inside of it, putting it, putting the entangling with WordPress as a method inside of your object mm -hmm. is that then the object contains a way to entangle itself with WordPress. Right. It's great, potentially. Um, right. If it's a basically WordPress object, there's no reason that the the object itself can't know about how to entangle itself. Right. So you're saying that like it's really nice that like I can make this or whatever the the markdown to HTML example that you that you mentioned, and then it, I just say this. Yeah. And it uh, and suddenly it's entangled with WordPress. It it registers a bunch of scripts and styles and stuff like that. Right. That's and so if saying. someone wants to use that object without doing the entangling, they just don't call the the, the method. The include whatever, include scripts and styles or whatever. Got it. Are. So do you think that these sort of hook things um, should be in a method in the class, or do you think they should be called outside of the class entirely? Well, so one of the, the weird patterns that WordPress plugins have is that they always knew of their class already. Like your plugin and any plugin I've ever seen has to know up its object because you aren't doing like anything where WordPress is like just newing up the object for you and you're just telling it. Uh, this class exists, please. So you're saying that I, as a plugin author, need this line 236. Right. And so when you need that, it's your call, in my mind, whether you want to call a method on the object that will do that entangling, or if you just want to like um, have specific functions that expose specific things that you want to entangle. Um, so yeah. if you, know, you, you could potentially write your NQ script Mm -hmm. Add action right here, or in a separate function like that. Right. So, so it's option not a method of the object, but is instead just another function. So that, okay. So, one thing we've got is is a method, which is what you're writing. Is uh, do hooks. I'm going to spell it with a Z, so people who read the code in the future will know I'm cool. And then we could do. So that makes me start to need to refer to the thing as an object, right? Yeah. Unless you did a static method, which is a whole other, a whole other conversation. Whole other so this is one option. Right. And the other option you were mentioning is just you, you, you do it as a method entirely outside of the class. Right. So in, in the case of your three hooks there, mm. um, you've got dollar sign this. Um, right. If you change that to the newed up object, either in this oh. function you're writing or right here, like you could just like write them at the base of the file, which isn't great. Okay, so this is not great. You're thinking. Um, I I don't love it. I don't hate it. Yeah. Um, I, well, sorry, I'm not seeing your screen. Yeah, I I think you could do it. Um, typically, I I I need to make it so it doesn't show me me. <laughs> When we're talking, yeah, I think this actually works pretty well. I actually like this um, okay. pretty well. I was thinking that we were doing something a little sillier, which is that like we weren't uh, calling our hook and we're instead just writing uh, the WP and Q script function right here. Oh, okay. So that you, you kind of like this as a as a way to go. I think th this this is clear and it's outside of it. I don't think there's a meaningful difference, and this is this is the basic. 
thing. Like this class from the look of it, just as you've scrolled past it, is mm -hmm. literally just injecting a bunch of HTML that's specific to WordPress and right. including some scripts and styles that are specific to WordPress. Right, yeah. So if that's the case of a class, I don't care as much that, oh, I have a method inside that's just like do WordPress things. Right. Um, whereas if I did have, as I mentioned, like a markdown converter object, mm -hmm. you need to entangle that with WordPress by putting a new thing in it that's just a bunch of WordPress specific code, I'd be much more hesitant to do. So you you wouldn't even put a method in it that's like, hey, I, I'm WordPress guy. You would you would say, look, this class only converts Markdown to HTML, and if you want to make that work in WordPress, may, do all that logic outside the class. Yeah, I mean, I, I think so, just for the sake of the, this. I mean, especially because in general, I'm not going to write the Markdown to HTML converter. I'm going to pull it in as a dependency of some kind, either using Composer or something else. Right. Right. And when I when I'm basically... dependencies and they've got methods that are like oh wp and q style dot css right and so if, if I were to do this I would go download the one file or like the vendor package from Composer mm -hmm. that is going to do the Markdown to HTML conversion and I'm going to hook it into WordPress myself in just like raw functions right got it okay. function so, calls so you have less of a problem with WordPress specific methods like in a class that is all about provoking some behavior in WordPress and basically right. functions to dump HTML into a WordPress site and add CSS and JavaScript files to that WordPress site. Yeah, but I keep using I keep using the term entanglement. Um, mm -hmm. People also talk about uh, cohesion. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm forgetting the other C word that's like it. Uh, mm -hmm. But basically, because we need to actually have, a, have an impact in WordPress, we have to at some point entangle ourselves right. uh, with WordPress because there's a high like cohesion between WordPress and this a, a plugin for WordPress there has to be inherently sure um, where but I don't think that goes as far as like then I can just do it in the constructor right uh, so it's either in a method in the class or you could do it outside the outside the class and just pass the class in as the first array argument in, yes. in your add action class. I, I, I think I favor either of the second methods over the first gotcha uh, okay covered Cool. Well, anything we didn't cover on the on the topic of, of WordPress hooks um, and object oriented code? Uh, no, I mean I think the serious wrap up is like I don't think there's a right way. Mm -hmm. I think either of them are either of the a separate method or just write the them as function calls outside of your method. Yeah, um, are very defensible. I I think the constructor is almost always the wrong, the wrong call. Yeah. Um, I think people like it because then outside of their class, they just have to put a new whatever at the bottom, right. but it creates this like quantum entanglement where you can't make two of these things most of the right. time. You know? Right, so don't put um, hooked functions in your constructor. Yeah. Don't do it, cool. All right, David, yeah, anything else? No. Okay, Cheers. let me see if I can gracefully turn off the screen share. Well, that's the stop broadcast button. All right, cool. Well, guys, hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.